better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about Venom issue 30. And this is written by Al Ewing. And we have art by Cafu and also Raphael Pimentel, who is coming in and doing some art as well. And great team on the book. I feel like this really hit like a stride now ever since they did like the human symbiote thing with Eddie and the Frankenstein himbo thing or whatever, like from that kind of moment on around issue 20 or so and upwards, I feel like the Eddie stuff has gotten a little bit more interesting because he's breaking that hamster wheel. And I feel like that's the one thing about this character. And I'm, I'm actually looking back at it in retrospect. Now I kind of like that Al Ewing did that because we've talked about characters in comics that like Peter Parker, even where they just feel like they're in this perpetual hamster wheel where they have to restart at some point and go back to basics and everything. And Eddie's one of those guys that seems to, every time it seems like he's going to go back to basics, he derails a little bit. And then he, now he has a son and then now he, you know, is a God, you know, and, and it's like, and he's stuck in this time loop and he meets characters like Dr. Doom and King the Conqueror. And it's, it's, he's interesting, whether you like the books or not, I, it's interesting that he's not just a plain character anymore. And, uh, and I like that. And that's the whole point of this is that it's like about being stuck in this hamster wheel and now Eddie has broken free from it. So in this issue, it's called the Royal Rumble, which is, like, you know, I guess a, a, ref, a wrestling reference. So, um, but it was pretty, pretty neat that this, that's what this is. It's, uh, it's Eddie in the garden now um, with Bedlam and, and he's breaking, broken free from the timeline and crashed that ship into Meridius. And now he's here to like screw stuff up. And so he's fighting the other symbiotes. Bedlam leaves him to go fight past Bedlam. And then Eddie is using like human symbiote stuff to fight the other ones and chopping heads off of symbiotes and stuff. And it's a full on battle and it's really interesting and, and kind of cool. And then the art's amazing. I love Cafu's artwork and, and, uh, and Raphael and like everyone who's working on this, it's a seamless book having two different artists, but still making it look seamless was, is really well you know done and hard to pull off. And this book does that really well. But then what happens is as, all the Eddies are fighting. We're like, we don't understand this. This event never happened. You're literally breaking everything. We've, we've been on this loop. And how are you doing this? And and then Meridius stands up. He's like, I knew this was going to happen. And I don't know how, but I'm going to crush you. And then he stops talking. And then boom, he gets ripped in half. And God Carnage comes out of him. And so God Carnage, this is after the Dylan crossover that we're going to talk about next. Because I was a little lost. I was like, wait, <laughs> I just read issue four of, the, of Carnage. And he went to look for Dylan. How is he here as a god? Or is this a different one from... And I'm like, no, they simplified it. They made all the carnages one carnage again. So how did this happen? So it turns out, you know, as you read the crossover, which we'll get to in the next episode, that'll explain how carnage got from Dylan to this point in the garden. But it is carnage and he's got the horns and he's got the god powers and he's got like a Meridius kind of symbol on him that's glowing. And so it looks like he's absorbing other symbiotes and other powers and he's ready to bring the fight to Eddie and get his revenge, I guess, and finally kill Eddie and be a part of this whole thing, this time loop break. So that's kind of where the book ends. It's a pretty short book for the most part. Um, some of these Al Ewing reads have been going by pretty quickly lately. Um, so there's not a ton to sink our teeth into, at least in this issue, I feel, except for just to give the vague overview of all the Eddie's fighting and stuff. There's really a cool scene where Bedlam and Bedlam's faces are mashed together and inside their brains, there's like 10 different Eddie's fighting. And it's like Eddie Brock with the mullet and Eddie Brock with the buzz cut. And it's, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool that they did that with the art and stuff. So um, yeah, this was a fun issue, but it's definitely setting up this Venom War story that they're going to be telling. And th that may be the conclusion of Al Ewing's run. I have no idea, but I feel like he'll be getting into issues 40, closer to 50 by that point. And so it makes sense that they're going to start, you know, building to this big event, which apparently is going to have a lot of crossovers. They've been announcing like a Spider-Man crossover where Spider-Man's back in the black costume. And apparently it's the actual black costume. So there's a lot of stuff I guess they're going to be doing. They're going to be doing zombie symbiotes uh, during this. So it's going to be a big crossover with a lot of tie-ins. So I'll cover or I'll tell you guys how I'm going to cover the Venom War stuff when we get there. Um, but for now, like I'm going to cover all the buildups in separate episodes, but we may just wait till Venom War is over and just do one long live stream, uh, maybe even with, you know, Eddie's mullet and uh, and Randy. And like we might do one where it's like the three of us talking if, if I'm able to get everyone together um, and have a couple people just do, a you know, like one long live episode, essentially, or Parasite podcast type episode where we all just discuss the entire run tie ins and everything. So we may just do that just to keep it, you know, simple because 
Uh, we're going to be getting movie news at some point soon, and I have to, you know, I want to keep episodes open for that as we lead to episode 900 of the show. So, yeah, we'll we'll cover that later. But for now, Venom number 30, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, again, the art was great. The Battle Royale, Royal Rumble type feel to it was good. But then bringing in Carnage, I'm like, okay, like, you know, whatever this is, I hope they just wrap the Carnage thing up quickly. I don't know if I want him to be part of Venom War or be the ultimate threat they take down. I feel like Meridius has been set up this whole time. So hopefully we just get, you know, Meridius coming back and, and seeing that battle conclude finally. Um, but we'll we'll get into that. Some of this I already know the answers to, but we'll get into it as we do the episode. So for right now, I'll just pretend like we don't and we'll, we won't cover it right now. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts on this issue in particular down below. And we'll keep talking as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace. Thank you.